What's up guys, Kids of Kicks here and welcome back to another episode of this Crystal Palace FIFA 16 career mode. Another sketchy episode last time out, form still not consistent enough for a team looking to achieve what we want to and that is of course a European or now the objectives have changed a little bit, a top four place in the Premier League. You can see more issue with Wilfred Saha, he asked for a wage rise, we didn't give it to him um, and the board have decided that he is going to go on the transfer list. Not someone that we want to, to see leave the club. So we are going to dive in, have a look at his contract, see what his demands are. Um, you can see that he's just asking simply for a pay rise. He's on 35 grand a week. He wants to almost double that and go to £60,000 a week. You can see just two goals in 28 appearances this year in his performances. We've got Vidio who can play in that position as well. So we don't think he quite warrants that sum of money. So we're going to pull out of the negotiations at this stage. His contract's not out. It's not up at the end of the year. But he just wants more money. Now we are going into some FA Cup action. You can see we are into the quarterfinal. So a win here would book us another trip to Wembley Stadium. We're taking on Swansea. It's going to be a tricky game. They're not a bad side, particularly at home. Not having the best of time in real life at the moment, mind. But you can see the side we're putting out here. Berahino up front. Balassi, Sinkra. Raven, Coquelin, Kobay and Vidio, a strong side. Obviously, you can notice that Zaha has been left out of the starting eleven this time round. But hopefully, we can emulate what we did in the Capital One Cup and get our hands on some silverware. But not the brightest start. You can see Ayu gets the wrong side of the defence really early on in this game. But luckily, Jack Butland is on hand to defuse the situation. But Vidio coming forward down that right-hand side. It was quite a lively opening to the game inside 10 minutes here. Puts it on a plate, really. Um, but the decent save from the, the goalkeeper and Swansea get the ball away. We weren't able to force it into the back of the net. But we continue to come forward, winning possession in midfield. It's Berahino here, lays it off to Kabai, who hits one from distance. And how about that? Contender for goal of the season out of nothing. Just strike one, very little support. Just look at the techers on that. The ball kind of didn't have a lot of swerve on it, but it definitely dipped. It beat the keeper and it was a very tricky one for him to deal with and definitely a contender for goal of the season. We nearly made it two, Berahino smashing one wide from point blank range and fortunately for him to save his embarrassment, the offside flag was up, so it wouldn't have counted anyway. So far, so good at the in interval. It's Sheffield, uh, Sheffield? Swansea City nil, Crystal Palace one, as we look to progress and reach Wembley again this season. You can see Balassi getting down the left-hand side here. Can he double our advantage? The shot is blocked. He picks out a teammate in Sinkraven. His effort was well saved down low by the goalkeeper. We weren't able to double our lead, but very nearly a freak mistake at the back there as he smashes the ball against Ashley Williams. And that nearly um, gave us a further opportunity. But Swansea came forward, a rare chance for them. You can see Adair winning the header, not causing Butland any problems at all. They really didn't offer a lot going forward, which is surprising really, especially in a cup tie where goal difference doesn't matter. Once you go behind, you fully expect them um, to, to fly forward. But Balassi cutting down the left-hand side again, gets past his man, challenge goes in. It looked to be a fair challenge, but the referee did award a free kick. We're making a triple change here. And several players coming on into the game. But Jamie Vardy gets loose, gets behind the defence here. Can he double our lead? He's got a lot of time here to think about what he wants to do. Tried to go around the keeper. Probably wasn't the best decision there. Um, the keeper just pouncing on the loose ball. Vardy, he, was, he didn't have the ball under close enough control to go around the keeper to start with. But we're going to come forward again. Just two minutes remaining now. It's uh, Mark Bartra, of all people, on the runs. Goes past his man and smashes it into the top corner. Not what you expect from your centre-back. What a finish. You know, if one of our strikers did that, we'd be absolutely raging about it. You can see he takes on his man, dips the shoulder, um, gets it onto his weaker left foot, and then just smashes the ball into the top corner of the net. A superb finish from the former Barcelona man. And that is enough to give us a two-goal lead. We are off to Wembley again in the semi-final where we'll be taking on, at this stage we can't confirm, the teams that are left are Stoke, Arsenal, QPR, Norwich, and you can see Manchester United and West Brom drew at the Hawthorne, so that will be going to a replay. It will be one of those sides that we face in the next round. And now we're taking on West Ham United. As you saw in the last episode, there are less than 10 games remaining now in the Premier League, so we can't afford any more slip-ups if we're going to achieve our goal. Bit of a rotation side. Jamie Vardy getting the nod up front. Joe Ledley and Fellaini both starting. Zaha coming back into the side, as is Pap Suare, who's had some time out due to the good form of Grimaldo. You can see Santana and Eric Dyer also coming back into the team. Now, West Ham is a team that traditionally we have struggled against. West Ham and Newcastle seem to be the, the boys that we can't play in this series. They've got a decent squad.
squad as well. You can see Marko Arnautovic there, um, signed obviously from Stoke. But they're, they're coming forward early doors here. They play it into feet, not really dealt with from Suarez. Valencia picks out Mark Noble, who has the first effort. It goes high and wide, luckily for us. But a poor kick out from Jack Butland gives a chance here to Enna Valencia. Goes past his man, cuts inside. Butland manages to make up for his mistake and it's smashed away from Eric Dyer. But Arnautovic taking on his man. A brutal challenge from Zaha there. Um, it's going to give West Ham the opportunity to put the ball into the box from a set piece. Captain Mark Noble standing over the ball. It's a decent ball in. We don't really deal with it. And Butland, deal with it, deal with it. And Butland has to make a good save to deny Winston Reid's headed effort, which was certainly creeping into that bottom corner. But we did catch, catch West Ham on the break here. You can see we're moving forward quite nicely. It's Yannick Balassi bearing down on goal. Can he finish? No, he can't. It's a good save from Randolph, but almost an own goal from O'Brien as the ball kind of ran away from him a bit. But he did eventually get back to clear. But the pattern of the game kind of continued in West Ham's favour. Really good football here. Mark Noble feeding it through. Uh, to Obiang who hits the post right on the stroke of half time we are very fortunate to go in still nil nil we've got to back our ideas up the first half was simply not good enough so we come out to the second half but unfortunately the game takes the same pattern really nice one touch football from West Ham here decent strike from the edge of the area a good save from Butland and eventually Vestergaard and Suarez between them get the ball out of danger but still we cannot deal with their threat you can see Santana knocks off the ball too easily there, in my opinion, from Noble. No three kick was given. Ball is stood up, and Butland is on hand to dive and palm the cross away from danger. But still, West Ham come forward. Not dealt with on the edge of the box there from Ledley. That's poor. Noble feeds it into Obiang. Great save from Butland, but Obiang shows great composure. Lifts it up to the back stick where, back stick where Lancini is waiting, and he manages to head the ball into the empty net. We had a defender on the line, but nobody picked up their man and West Ham have been knocking on the door and it's no less than they deserve you can see the travelling fans in the background there giving it large um, Dwight Gale coming on as we look to get ourselves back in this game and he almost had an immediate impact getting the ball from kickoff driving directly which is something we haven't done enough in this game having the effort from distance but that was uh, keeper could comfortably watch that sail wide of the mark but West Ham they didn't defend they still tried to come forward and add to their lead and they were much the better side in this game we have no arguments whatsoever the ball falls to Antonio here at the back stick and he makes it two combination of bad defending um, question marks over Butland for that one he got a decent hand on it you can see Suarez just loses his man it comes off sort of the underside of Butland's bicep really kind of off his elbow um, and it's West Ham 2, Crystal Palace nil, and we have a massive uphill battle now with less than 10 minutes to go. But Jamie Vardy's coming forward, looking to get us back into this game. You can see he's got support, uh, Saha making the run. He has the effort, it's kind of blocked, but he shows good composure to pick out Vardy in the box, who smashes it past the keeper. Randolph is beaten eventually. Wanted Vardy to pick the ball up, but he was more interested in celebrating. He hasn't scored for a while, so you can't really blame him, but... We've got a lifeline in this game, an undeserved lifeline. We don't deserve, West Ham deserve to be out of sight. It's as simple as that. You can see us switching to all-out attack as Arnautovic comes forward for West Ham with two minutes left. He almost immediately restores their two-goal advantage. It wasn't quite to be, but still, they kept us on the, uh, on the back foot. We weren't able to create any chances. So Rate forcing another good save from Jack Butland, who had a decent game, and we probably have him to thank that it wasn't more than 2-1 but another slip up just eight games remaining now we are three points behind fourth place Arsenal so it is against us now it's not in our hands anymore we've got some tough games to come as well we've still got to play Chelsea we've still got to play Manchester United and I think we've still got to play league leaders Manchester City as well so real tough fixtures it's not looking likely, but we still believe eight games left, anything could happen. The teams at the top have all got to play each other as well, so they could take points off one another. You can see we're there in fifth place. Um, as I said, three points outside the top four. It's City, who are now the league leaders, um, pulling away from Chelsea. Sunderland still bottom, QPR, and now Sheffield Wednesday um, occupying those relegation places. Time is running out for everybody, the teams at the top and the teams at the bottom. We have to buck our ideas up now. But that's going to bring this episode to a close, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Check out the links in the description for my social media. Drop a like and subscribe to the video if you're new to the channel or haven't done so already. And we will see you again next time.